Tim Cassius, IFL TV, MTK Global. We're in Saudi Arabia. I'm joined by <coughs> Liam Smith himself. I was going to think of saying to call you, but Liam Smith it is. Uh, yeah, press conference done here for your brother against uh, Jules Groves. A few people asking a few kind of different questions in that press conference. Yeah, you don't really get that in England, do you? No, you don't. Everyone has a name. What's it called? Like a uh, mic that interprets the Arabic questions. So it was a bit of a different one, but all in all, they're all they're all the same, really, aren't they? Yeah. You have to do them. Um, yeah, all roads lead obviously to Friday night, and uh, yeah, this is your brother's moment to kind of become world champion. But he's got George Groves in front of him, Liam. It's not going to be easy. No, it's not. No world title fight it should be, um, and especially, you know, kind of what Joe said. He's not coming, becoming world champion, and not coming, going into the rankings at number five as a world champion. He beat George Groves, the best middleweight in the world, as Ring Magazine champion. And to be fair to him, it's what it's what he's waited a long time to do. I think. Um, Everything happens for a reason. He's a better fighter now than he was 18 months ago, but he probably should have fought for a world title 18 months ago. Um, he won, he'll probably want to find him for the WC title two years ago, uh, and he's waited patiently. He's gone in this tournament to beat the best. He went. He was going to Germany to fight Jürgen Bremer, but again, all roads have led to the number one, the number two, George Groves, Ring Magazine title, the final. You know, kind of for all the marbles, as they say, and he's. Um, He's in a very good place. He's a better, he's a better fighter now than he was then, and I think everything's happened for the reason. And for Friday night, I think he becomes world champion. How much does the factor of experience comes into this? We know George has kind of been in with that high level of opposition in his career compared to your brother. So, how much of that is going to come into play on Friday? It, it, it's also, of course, experience is always a good thing. But if Callum's not an experienced fighter after 24 fights and being in Germany, being fought in LA, he's fought. You know, if Callum, Callum's not an experienced fighter now, he's never going to be. Um, but then you can look at it, George Groves' bigger fights, he lost. And then, from my point of view, George Groves is not a better fighter now than he was when he when he boxed for Carl Frotch. He's not as good a fighter as he was back then. So, it, 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 it all weighs itself out. You can pick one thing out, but the other thing benefits you. you know, George Groves has got the experience, but in his bigger experience fights, he lost. So, it, it all equals itself out, you know what I mean? Um, George goes to take the defeat, Callum Smith hasn't, you can look at it, that's Callum's plus. Callum doesn't know how to lose, George does. Um, you, can, you can pick holes in all, all things, I think the two of them at the end of the day are two top fighters, two of them at the top level and you know the better man will win on Friday. You've been world champion, your brothers have fought for world titles, what, what kind of things do you say to, to Callum in that respect? Or do you not really sort of Go that way. No, I won't go that way because he's been, he's been in and around the situation of all of us. Coogan, he's been in Monaco, he's been in Germany, San Francisco, Dallas. You know, all of our world title fights, win or lose, he's been there. And this this, is not, this won't be new to him. As much as it's a massive stage and it's you know massive money involved and stuff like that, it won't get to him like it will get to some people who's new to it. You know what I mean? He'll have felt he's been around it. He won't feel like this is his world, first world title shot. He will when he gets the benefits of it for a selfish reason, but... He won't feel all the massive pressures that, wow, I'm fighting for the world title here. He'll feel, you know, I'm not boasting a little bit, but he's been around myself, around Canelo. Now, as in, the, the Canelo thing was a bigger, Canelo's a bigger star than George Groves. I mean, I don't, I'm not nitpicking it. Andre Ward with Paul, he's been around big fights, elite fighters, as in them two mentioned. So, he's, um, again, this won't be like, wow, I mean, I'm in a monster here. He's been in big situations before, and again, look, look at But he hasn't being, been in the ring with him. No, he hasn't. He hasn't. And and but I mean, for now, I mm. mean now, fight week. He's not sitting here now, yeah, yeah. overthinking things. It, the, like the situation you know, overwhelming him. Yeah. This is not overwhelming. Yeah. Fight week can eat, eat people up. All media, all this, you know, getting asked questions in Arabic. You know, that can eat people up, and he's just. He's relaxed, and like I say, if there's ever a mentality I'd like around the fight week, it's counseling it. Mm, he definitely seems relaxed, I will say that. Um, just want to obviously go back to a couple of weeks ago and get your thoughts on uh, Triple G and, and uh, Canelo. What did you make of it? Was it a robbery? Was it not no, a robbery? No, 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 I couldn't argue with it. Uh, Golovkin by one, so if you... If one of them rounds you give to Canelo, what I give to Golovkin, then you've got Canelo by one, so it's not I couldn't a argue. No, no way. I thought the first fight was a lot clearer mm. for Golovkin than this was. Um, I couldn't argue. I thought Canelo was better again in this one. I thought Golovkin was a little bit older, I won't say worse, because he's still an unbelievable fighter. I thought he looked like 
he was tired a little bit this time, but you've never ever looked like he's never looked like he was tired and or struggling in fights. And I think maybe Canelo's body shots helped in that factor. But I thought Canelo was coming, a, Golovkin was coming a little bit ragged, and I thought Canelo was a bit was, was was class in this fight. But again, I think I did score to Golovkin by one on the night, and again the next morning when I watched it. So, mm. but a tough fight, two of them are class. Just saying, Canelo could potentially go and fight David Lemieux now. Oh, Does make any sense, no, really, no. for Canelo to take that fight? No, no. I, w- I was interested in the Charlo fight. I think that's a good yeah. fight for Canelo because you know it's uh, people are getting a little bit of a rave. You know what I mean? People are raving about Charlo a little bit. Uh, he'd be a young, hungry fighter coming for Canelo. So I'd like to see that one. I wouldn't. I wouldn't stay up late to watch Lemieux and Canelo put it that way. Yeah. Um, I think it's a no-brainer. And uh, Jaime Mungaya destroyed Brandon Cook. Yeah. Very impressive. Uh, what did you make of his performance? Just again, kind of. I think Cook was poor. Cook was. I picked that with that. And, um, I told everyone he'd win inside one to six. I knew. I know Brandon Cook, and I knew he, he weren't the best of fighters in that sense. If you know what I mean. Mungaya is a good kid. He's coming through and still makes mistakes. Still, still a bit green and I know it probably gets later for saying this, but I've, I've bite your hand off for a rematch with him, Cook and mm. with. You know, next or start the next year because I just think little things played its part and while I was poor I, I think I, I know for a fact I, I, I could be a better fighter I hadn't fought for 10 months which is just a little bit of bad luck I had to pull out the Saddam Ali fight but you know, from November to July it was a long time out the ring and again I messed about with me visa <laughs> I never got to Vegas till Tuesday and 4 Saturday that one didn't know but um, I'd bite your hand off for a rematch room What's the latest news with you? Yeah, I'm, I'm just going to fight December. And Where are you going to fight December? You're going to fight on the... Yeah, I'm either on the 8th or the 22nd. 22nd. Yeah. Um, but again, I want, I, want, I, want a, I want a big fight. I don't want to be... You don't want to tick over just no, to go no, on the No, half six in the afternoon. No, I want, I want straight back into a big fight. Any, any, any name you taught me, I'll take. Again, I'll aim anyone internationally. I don't think there's really anyone, anyone domestically, is there? Any so, names going to spring to mind for yeah. December? December, you know, not, not, I'm, I don't know, I, I'd love the Brandon Rios fight, he, Eggington's just fell through with him, mm. um, you know, he's a name, and he, he comes to have a go, so I think it'd be, it'd be a fun fight, but anyone really, Hugo, I want just a decent fight that'll, I'm 30, and I know I'm still good enough to force my way back into it, and no, I'm not waiting for volunteers off people, you know, because like, people saying, oh, you've got a decent name in America, and I, I'm not... I'm too good to sit waiting for that Coogan. I'd rather force myself into a position to get another shot. Yeah. All right, Liam, listen, thank you very much for giving us uh, a little bit of your time. That's Muhammad Ali's daughter oh, there. Yeah, I think. It's, yeah. it's somebody else easier, isn't it? Yeah. Um, and uh, yeah, we'll catch up with you over the Sorry, weekend. Mate, thanks. Nice to you. Top man. Sorry, mate.